Hey, all my fellow Taino tribesmen, it's your boy, not this another tribe, and I have Green here with me. Hello. And this is Green's idea, so I'm gonna keep it at the down low for now. So, Green, what are we doing right now? So, without the foundation knowing, I thought it would be a good idea uh, to, I don't know, just to uh, link a few files as a bit of a warning to the world that some of these things exist and they're out there. Are so, you are you sure? Because <laughs> knowing your knowing that knowing your mom Dr. the right, he's going to fucking strangle us if he finds out. Oh, don't worry. She won't find out. She's uh, occupied with something involving her work, so... Uh, hopefully. It'll be, I give it about a few minutes or to an hour. Hopefully, be done, so. hopefully, because remember, I'm still the newest member he, in the foundation, and I don't want to get shot off or, this early. Yeah, I don't. Don't worry, you won't. I know my. I know my way around each and every one of these researchers. All right. So, which SCP file, or in this case, SCP recordings, uh, do you uh, do you got for us? Let's see which one is it. Um, oh, right. So this is SCP-073, otherwise known as Kane. Oh, Kane. Uh, that guy's chill. I, I like hanging out with, with him. Yeah, Kane's a pretty good guy to talk to. Just, uh... Yeah, just... Try yeah. not to hit him. Yeah, do not. All right. In that okay. case, should we... Shall we go ahead and get started? Yeah, let me get this over here and... Okay, this is a very unique art style. Did, they, did someone make animations of these things to make it safer? Probably for the new researchers, just to, you know, give keep things simple while also making sure they're focused by being entertaining as possible. Alright. So, shall we get started? We shall. Let's do it. It was New York City in the 1960s, and the city was lit up with color and life 24 hours a day. From the madmen of the Madison Avenue mm. advertising companies with their crisp pressed suits, slick haircuts, and even slicker salesmanship to the revolutionary art and culture of Greenwich Village. I'm still surprised Village. that there's actually no Mobians the where you live. Most of them are, From most dusk people until are dawn, humans. Then You're the only, like, the day, Mobian in this universe. The streets were positively flooded with yeah, people on their way to work. Yeah, it's a little awkward, Headed out for a night on the town, or looking to, to get into some to trouble. It. it wasn't I, likely that you would notice I mean, you're one the one staying in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a facility without getting outside of the actual thing, unless it's for universal travels. Unless, of course, you were yeah. looking for him. You see, this That's, particular man uh, had caught the attention of a particularly unsavory here. group of fellows. Yeah. The DeMauro crime universe. family was not the sort of group you wanted to get on the bad side Ooh. of, especially the family's eldest son, Mario DeMauro. And unfortunately hmm. for this oh. quiet man in the slate gray suit, keeping his head down, he had found himself smack dab in the middle of Mario's bad side. He hadn't done anything oh. wrong, really. He'd been walking by a bakery a few days prior, when he bumped into a little old lady by mistake. He didn't mean to bump her, he didn't mean to make her stumble, and he certainly didn't intend oh. to make her drop the birthday cake she was holding. Aw, oh, come but it on! All happened just oh. the same. The cake box fell to the ground, the cardboard crumpled, the and cake. suddenly there was vanilla sponge and buttercream frosting oh, splattered all over the filthy waste. city sidewalk. The strange man helped the little old lady back up to her feet, and apologized for the trouble as she cried that her son's 30th birthday was ruined. He watched her adjust her oh. hat and run away, and felt a pang of regret, but soon forgot all about the cake, the lady, the birthday. Mario did uh. it. His friends called him Mario Birthday Boy Di Mauro for a reason. Mm. All year he oh. looked forward to one thing, his favorite cake from his favorite bakery, delivered to him by his favorite person, his mother. When Mrs. DiMauro described the stranger who had caused her to drop the cake, Mario decided that this disrespect to him, to his mother, to his entire family, 
would not go unpunished. He sent out a group of his Even though it was an accident? Bobby the Weasel Passarella, Vernon Two yeah. Knife Galetti, and Ben the Mammoth Santoni. They tracked the man down, figured out his usual haunts, his schedule, the Ooh, streets pizza. he walked down every day, and reported back. Mario gave the order. It was time to make their move. And so oh, on that ordinary day, as that I nice, that neat, I polite man yeah, I wouldn't down do the street, that. his cake mistake far from his mind, Mario and the boys watch from the shadows. Oh, this just for Ordinarily, fucking Mario birthday wouldn't cake. involve himself directly Talk in this kind petty. of nasty business. He would send others to do his dirty work. That's how mortals are. Absolutely personal. petty. And he wanted to be there to see the look on this disrespectful stranger's face. Well, as then he it be, I'm a mortal. I'm a mortal. And I'm not this petty. Dark, until the man was alone. Oh, yeah, I know. You're, then, you're one of the many exceptions. Only then, they would strike. Curiously, the man never did much of anything other than walk around the city avoiding others. If someone spoke to him, asked him for directions, he would answer them courteously, but then he would continue on his way. Yeah, Once he stopped yeah, at a he's, restaurant he's for a, a steak he's and a, a glass of water, but he seemed to have yeah. no job, no family, no friends, or really much of a life at no all. No job? Though Boy, the others you were you perplexed, do Mario something. was delighted. There was no oh one God. to miss this man once he was gone. This would be even easier than he had expected. As the streets grew darker and the night deepened, oh, the monsters for the, prepared for the to dark. execute That's their one attack. Of the Armed with knives, gang strategies. guns, piano wire, and all yep. their trusty usual suspects, oh, yeah, they were poised for the perfect moment. Yeah, they are. And that perfect moment This is not going to end well. The strange man turned down an alley and the group followed him into the shadows. They were just oh. about to corner him when the man turned it around would be and an alley. Them. Excuse me, gentlemen. The man spoke in a clipped voice, refined but cold, with an accent none of them could quite place. Hmm. Would you care to explain why you've been following me all day? It's becoming a bit unsettling. Oh, he found out the for a froze, long while. Shocked. What kind of game was this guy playing? <laughs> Listen here, wise guy, Vernon said, holding one of his signature two knives in each hand. We don't take kindly to folks with bad manners. We thought we'd give you a good old fashioned. Hey, man, that's my ass. I do Have apologize. The strange man asked, perplexed. Yeah. No, but we're about to become well acquainted. Vernon took a step forward. I had to feel that this old lady left out all the light. more specific there was nothing details. behind his target but a closed off alleyway. Yeah. Nowhere to run. I don't think you want to do that. The man held his hands up in a gesture of Oh, peace. yeah. Please. Yeah, you really don't want to do that. a terrible that. idea. Yeah, Vernon yeah, laughed. it's a terrible idea. <laughs> Would you get a load of this clown? Ben shrugged his massive shoulders and cracked his knuckles. Bobby wound the sharp piano wire around his fists, ready to wrap it around the stranger's neck. Enough small talk! Got him, Vernon! Mario called out, stepping forward to get oh, a better Lord. look at his intended victim. I've had just about enough of this. At his boss's word, Vernon rushed at the stranger, stabbing him in the stomach. Suddenly, he cried out, one of his knives falling to the ground with a clatter. He grabbed at his own abdomen, yep, stumbling back, there it is. blood there it is. poured between his fingers. He, he got me! With what? Called Ben. <sighs> I tried to <laughs> warn you. The stranger sighed, almost sounding disappointed that no one had listened to him. Forget it, I'll handle this! Bobby grabbed a hold of the stranger, uh, pulling the piano wire tight idea. across his throat. Bad idea. No sooner had the wire tightened across the man's windpipe than Bobby was on his knees on the ground, clawing at his own throat as he gasped for air. A thin line of blood trickled down his neck. Mm, there, something invisible, small and sharp, had cut into his skin. Then rushed to the side of his fallen brethren, picking them up in his massive arms and pulling them back out of the way. I guess if you want something done right, oh, this you gotta is do it oh, yourself. This is the worst part. I'm Mario guessing. Said, pulling his favorite pistol out of his yep. pocket and aiming it directly and... between the stranger's eyes. Please, you don't want to do this. The stranger begged, but Mario wouldn't yield. Oh, I very much do. Call it a belated birthday present. And he pulled the trigger. When the police arrived to investigate the sound of gunshots, yeah, you're, they found your belated sight. birthday present Four gangsters is a lying dead on the ground from a hell. gunshot wound, choking, stabbing, and a heavy blow to the head. At the center of it all, there was one man completely unharmed yep. except for a hole in his shirt and some dirt on his suit. Unsure what else to do with the situation, they arrested the man and brought him in for questioning. The murder suspect had no identification on him. And refused to give the officers a full name. So they threw him in a holding cell and designated him a John Doe. They questioned the man for hours Typical. trying to get Typical him to explain name. how he had taken down four of the city's deadliest gangsters without getting a scratch on him, or where he had managed to stash his weapons before the police got there. Every time he insisted, 
I never touched them. At the same time, the SCP Foundation was combing their way through arrest records, looking for any signs of the strange and unusual passing through police custody. Oh, they paid particular attention yeah. to John and Jane Doe's, looking for people with superhuman abilities or unexplained characteristics. The events in New York City caught their eye, and a Foundation operative was dispatched to retrieve the strange man from the NYPD. They found him sitting in his cell, reading a newspaper, refusing to answer any more questions. When the operative noticed a large bruise on the attending officer's face, he stammered, uh, The guy wasn't cooperating. I, I tried to show him I was serious, but this happened. <laughs> he hit you, the operative asked. The policeman <laughs> simply shook his head. No, oh, I, I don't know how he does it. I, I hit him. The man was released into the custody of the SCP Foundation and officially designated SCP-073. SCP-073 is yep. a man of Middle Eastern descent, standing at six foot one inches tall, with black hair and there and it is, eyes. the mark of Cain. He appears to be in his yep. early thirties, but research indicates that he is much older than that. He looks like an average man with <laughs> a few noticeable exceptions. Way his arms, older. legs, spinal cord, and shoulder blades have been replaced with metal of some kind. When asked about these metal additions, the subject seems surprised and insists that he has no memory of when or why the alterations were made. He has a symbol carved into his forehead, which has not yet been translated, though it seems to be Sumerian in origin. The mm -hmm. subject is aware of the symbol's presence, but does not like to yep. discuss it at all. He becomes distressed whenever it is brought up and refuses yeah, to explain. Yeah, because bad memories. SCP-073 has the needs of an ordinary human being and requires regular consumption of meals as well as plenty of water. He subsists on a strictly animal-based diet of various meats uh, and cheeses, simple. which are provided for him on yeah. demand. He refers to himself as Cain and is generally friendly and polite to everyone he interacts there's with. There's the name. If a bit yep, formal there's, there it is. He is extremely helpful and has volunteered to help out with he various tasks around the foundation site, from cleaning yep. and general maintenance to assisting in research. He prefers to provide assistance on the research side of things, largely due to his photographic memory, wide knowledge of world history, and fluency in most oh, yeah. of the world's common spoken languages. When yeah, he this was first guy, brought this guy into foundation around. custody, he provided evidence he, of these skills yeah. via a placement test in French, German, English, Japanese, Mandarin, Italian, and a dozen other languages. What about a trivia Spanish? contest where he bested the Foundation's top historian, and oh, a memory exam wherein he read Probably an entire 800-page dictionary in a minute and a half, and was able to recite every single word without help. In addition to his intelligence and some of the unusual aspects of his appearance, the subject also possesses some impressive and strange abilities. Kane's physical presence is mm -hmm. deadly to any life grown in soil, oh, from fruits and yeah, vegetables there it is. to trees, grass, and yep. anaerobic bacteria. Any soil that Kane sets foot on will experience this effect, which extends to all land in a 20 meter radius. Kane also has a destructive impact on plant-based material that has undergone processing, uh, yep. including paper and wood and on produce that has been grown yeah. hydroponically. It is unknown why his presence has this Even effect, gross. but it influences yep. everything from his diet to the furniture placed in his containment chamber. Kane is impervious yeah, to physical harm, which is not out of the ordinary just... for an anomaly in mm -hmm. the custody of the SCP Foundation, but the way in which this invulnerability manifests is particularly notable. Any violence that is directed towards Kane bounces off of him, and turns back on his attacker. Whatever is done to him will affect the person attempting to hurt him. This applies whether a person yep. means harm or not, and whether they use a weapon or their bare hands. Though the harm done to Cain does not show up as a physical injury, he does still experience the sensation of pain, and has requested that the Foundation refrain mm. from any especially painful tasks especially since he no. has been so cooperative with their research. Yep. SCP-073's resistance to any physical damage has made it difficult for the Foundation to perform any in-depth medical tests on him. A few days after he was first brought into the research facility, a team of scientists begin to take various DNA samples. At first, the process went smoothly. They cut off a small piece of Kane's hair, swapped his mouth for a saliva sample, and scraped a few dead skin cells from the surface of his arm. Then, with the man's permission, they decided to go a bit deeper and take some blood and tissue samples. This is where the Ooh. trouble began. Oh, the researcher in charge of taking the blood oh, sample complained of a sudden sharp pain oh, when she pricked Kane's arm with the needle, occurring in the small part of her own arm. Nevertheless, she pushed through and took a small vial of blood. Oh, However, boy. when the blood was tested, it was found to belong to a 40-year-old woman. Somehow, instead of drawing blood from the test subject, 
The needle had filled the vial with the researcher's own blood. The Even research blood? team tried again, with a different doctor administering the Damn. blood test. But the same thing happened right. again, you and freak. again, Oof. and again. Each time, the person taking the blood sample somehow extracted a small amount of their own blood. When the team attempted to take a small tissue sample from Kane, cutting off a tiny portion of skin with a scalpel, the same thing happened. Kane's skin was left completely unharmed, and the tissue sample wound up belonging to the doctor who took it in the first place. What happened if a does it? Does oil failure, come out instead? The head researcher declared that there would be no more medical tests performed on SCP-073. No if we keep going at this rate, so we're what? going to have to organize oh, a blood the drive. Oh, the he quipped five. when pressed on the matter by higher-ups. Why nobody asked him to take his own blood is, to this day, a mystery. Because the attempts to test Kane's blood and other organic tissue have proven fruitless, the research team turned their attention to the more inorganic parts of his body, namely the portions of unidentified metal located along his limbs, shoulder blades, and spine. After taking a closer look at the metal, one research assistant suggested that it might be beryllium bronze, a metal that has appeared under a variety of other anomalous circumstances. SCP-073 confirmed that this metal originated in the Middle East many, many years ago, but was unable to provide an exact date, location, or purpose oh. of origin. Beryllium bronze has oh. been identified as a component in several SCPs so far, including SCP-1216, SCP-1427, SCP-2481, and SCP-2711. Further research Not into really the unusual else. metal and its connection to many ancient civilizations is considered a top priority. Currently, Kane is kept at SCP Foundation Site 17, where he is permitted to roam freely as long as he does not leave the facility or come into contact with any plant-based SCPs oh. or plants of any kind. Oh, a new researcher I remember that, that encountered guy. Kane in the site asked him for his opinion on a bouquet of flowers the researcher had purchased for his wife. Before Kane could protest, the researcher had placed the bouquet in his hands, where it immediately disintegrated, oh, much to the distress oh. of both men. Kane apologized profusely and told the researcher that he would offer to pay for a new bouquet, but unfortunately, he did not have any money. A memo was sent out to all site staff later that day to remind them of Kane's effect on plant-based life forms. Yeah. Due to the frequent mm. staff turnover at SCP Foundation that. sites, this reminder yeah. is issued on a regular basis. In addition to the reminder about plant life exposure, Foundation staff are routinely reminded that they must never use any violence against SCP-073 under any circumstances. Great emphasis is placed on the fact the that this rule is for their too, own safety, not for the safety of SCP-073. Yeah. Though most of the staff know by now not to deliberately harm SCP-073 in any way. Accidents still one happen, literally tried to, and one careless hit, moment could result in unintentional self-injury. For example, mm -hmm. one day Dr. Byer was having lunch in the cafeteria, walking to his seat with his favorite oh, dish, Byer. a steaming hot bowl of tomato soup, with a grilled oh, cheese sandwich on the him, side. Yeah. He had specifically asked the kitchen staff to make it as hot as possible, so that it would still be warm oh, when he had finished no. his sandwich and several chapters of the book he was reading on his break. As he passed SCP-073, who was enjoying a meal of his own, Dr. Byer tripped and spilled his scalding oh, hot no. soup all over the man's oh. back. Before he could react, he oh. fell to his knees in pain as blisters Ow. and burns erupted across his own back. Kane jumped up from the table with a surprised yell, but his skin remained unblemished. Dr. Byer, on the other hand, had to spend the rest of his lunch break in the medical wing and never got to finish that soup. Ooh, Kane is permitted ooh, to interact ooh. with other SCPs as oh, long as interaction between the two is not considered dangerous for one or more parties ooh. involved. No. He has not expressed much interest oh. in other SCPs, with the exception of the few that are oh. permitted to roam the facility yeah. as they please. For example, he has engaged in some polite small talk with SCP-507 and always gives a friendly pat on hey. the head to oh, SCP-999 whenever hey, he bumps into it. There is one SCP, however, oh, that Kane has no. specifically requested oh, no. he never be in a room with. SCP-076, no. also known as Abel. Though he Abel. has kept his personal knowledge of SCP-076 to himself, Kane has admitted that he knows everything about the man. He would not elaborate further and simply said that it would be better for everyone involved if the two never met. No one knows for certain yeah. what would happen if those two superhumans came face to face. But if someone as powerful as Kane is afraid of the consequences, saw a chainsaw? it certainly cannot be good. Now go check out SCP-073 and SCP-076 Kane vs. Abel and SCP-6008 nope. Noah's Ark for more epic anomalies. Uh, those two... It was New York City. Yeah, oh boy.
Yeah. Kane's a chill guy, but his brother's a dick. Then again, I can't exactly blame him considering what happened. Bruh, it took. Bruh, it took. Bruh, you, you should have seen that. You should see. You should have seen what what happened with me and April. We, we, we were we were in a, in a humongous ba battle, and we, and I was able to drown. I was able to keep him underwater enough for him to drown. Oof! You should have seen how I went up against him first. He he considers me a rival, even though well, that will change the more or we fight. But oof! I. I managed to just barely mangle him up to the point where or he would die, but oh, the regenerating I had to do after. Yeah, and and silver had silver had to help help heal my wounds because my wounds were also were gonna kill me if I, if that if if they were left alone for too long. Oh yeah, I think I remember. Which, that. which is why Silver wants to erase April now because of because of what happened. Well, he kind of can't, but he's welcome to try. Well, remember, but... Silver, Silver's the highest now, so we don't know what what his his ability can't be at this point. True. But anyway, yeah, that was Kane and again a chill dude. I like to hang around with him. We like to we, we like to chat around here and there. Even show interest in my in my universe. Really cool guy. I love love to talk to him whenever I get the chance. Yep. But yeah, that that was the first SCP. That was the first SCP explanation. So. And don't worry, I'll make sure to put a link in the description and on the on the top on the top right corner to to direct you to the original bit to the original video that that the green got, uh, brought over here to show uh, to show to everyone. <laughs> and for your sake, we better not get caught. Yeah, don't don't worry, we won't. Oh crap. Crap, she's done. Oh well, I guess that's our that's our time. I guess that's our time to go. So anyway, that that yeah, that's been the that's been the the first SCP video, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe, and don't let us forget you for more content in the future. And subscribe to Green here because he's gonna be showing a lot more content in his channel in the future. Until then, farewell, my fellow Titan of Choice men. See you guys later. Harry, Harry Green, put the file back, put back to where it belongs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she, she could be here any minute, so I'm just gonna put this back here. All right. And I'm out of here. See ya. Hey, hey, no, 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 no.